Okay, today we're going to learn how to use Fusion 360 for two-sided machining on your Shapeoko, or this applies to any CNC router. Here's the part that we're going to make. You can see it's pretty simple, uh, but it does require two-sided machining. The first, first side we're going to do is kind of clear out this area here, and then we'll come back and do this chamfer on the back side, and then of course contour and cut out the part. So there's a couple things I like to do in this uh, in this particular case. We're going to use pins to perform the flipping operation. So in this case, I like to model my stock as well. And so in this case, I have two bodies. Uh, here inside of uh, Fusion, I have body number one, which is my finished part. Body number two is going to be my stock. And so I've also created these three holes here um, in the part that I'm going to be machining. Two of these holes are only going to be used for the pins. So let's take a look at our machining operations. Okay, so let's first look at our setup here. I have three separate setups here, one for each side of the part and then one for the holes. Okay, so this first operation is just going to be for the holes. And here you can see I've defined my stock by selecting a solid. And I've defined my Z and my X direction with my zero point at the bottom of my part. I've selected the body. Uh, of the stock as well of which I'm going to machine. Now under this whole operation, <clears throat> just a simple drilling operation, I'm going to drill all three holes. And what I'm going to also do is I'm going to drill through the entire part and into the wasteboard so that when I drop my pins in. Sometimes you can't go through the entire part and all the way through in one operation so you might have to do it twice. Um, once on the wasteboard, once on the part. But in this case, I have the clearance to do that. One of the key things here, I think, since we're going to be drilling this hole with the same diameter tool uh, as, as the hole definition, one of the settings that I like to use here on my cycle is this deep drilling here. Deep drilling full retract. And when you see here, it's just going to kind of chip away at this thing may not be the most efficient, but I think it's safe. It clears out the chips and it avoids any kind of uh, potential um, potential uh, burning of, of chips or, or problems that you might have with this type of operation. So it's a pretty safe uh, pecking depth and it'll do these holes pretty quickly. So that's really the first operation. Stepping into number two here, so now we're ready to actually start doing the operations here. I'm just going to hide my second body since I don't need to see that anymore. But you can see here in my second operation, again, I've chosen you know, my stock from a solid. My Z is at the bottom here. And I'm ready to start performing some operations. My adaptive toolpath is pretty straightforward. You can see here some of the options that I have for this. Uh, I've selected the machining boundary here. And then my depth of cut is pretty aggressive on here as well. Since I'm going to be machining this out of PVC, I can be pretty aggressive on my uh, cutting feed rate. So we can kick this up to like 120. And you can see I'm running this at 12,500 RPMs, which is roughly on Makita, about two and a quarter on the dial. So that's my first machining operation. <clears throat> when that's complete, I'm going to want to flip the part over um, along its center line. So essentially it's going to be flipped, as you see here, like this. Okay, And then... Once we choose the second operation here, so essentially what I did is I just did a duplicate here 
of my previous operation just so that I wouldn't have to select the stock again and, and all that kind of stuff. And then I deleted out the tool pass that I didn't need and then I created two new ones. So the first is going to be this ramp uh, operation. So again, this is pretty, pretty aggressive since it's PVC. And then the last operation that we have here is going to contour this out. So some of the operations that we see here inside of um, this. Uh, for example, I have tabs turned on, so I'm going to have these tabs uh, available to be holding the part in so it doesn't flop around when it's cutting. I like using these triangular tabs in Fusion versus the rectangle. When I choose rectangle, uh, sometimes I get a little tool mark you know, on the side here uh, of the part, and, and I don't like the way what it does with the, the surface finish of that, so I, I use triangle, and it, it seems to avoid that. And here I've set the width of that. So of course, before we do any kind of machining, we want to do a simulate. And so here we're just going to simulate this. And we're just going to play through it. So here you can see the, the whole pecking operation. Just fast forward that. The adaptive tool path. Flip the part over. And then, of course, the final contour operation. And that's what we're going to be, end up with. So now let's go cut this part out and see what happens.